Thanks for joining us on this video. If you're new here, I'm Willie. And I'm Sarah. We're a musician and artist and we recently sold our suburban home to move to a tiny, nearly 200-year-old cottage on the Isle of Skye in the Scottish Highlands with our dog, Jack Spaniels. In this episode, we take you on a trip to Inverness, the capital of the Highlands. Also, we meet up with our friend Ian from Scotland on a shoestring and his rescue greyhound, De Niro, to search for a secret abandoned village. Plus, we continue the refurbishment of our stone outbuilding. Join us as we continue... Live in the sky life. We're going to Inverness. We're going to go to a few shops and run a few errands that we need to do. We've got Jack in the back. He's sleeping. So we maybe take him for a walk along the river in Inverness. Yeah. So he gets a little day out as well. So we're just driving now, we're going to cross the bridge back to the mainland and we will take you with us. Arrived at our destination. Yeah. Where are we going? Mountain Warehouse. For a hoodie. Big fleecy hoodie. A big fleecy hoodie to wear in the house, yeah, while yeah. working. <laughs> and doggies can go in too, pups. So Jack's coming with us. And chaos will ensue, <laughs> I'm sure. Are you gonna behave yourself, pups? Are you gonna be a good boy? Okay, let's go. Fleecy. Fleece lining. Bum, 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 go fleece lining. <laughs> I should have expected that. That looks like a good colour for me to steal. I like cosy. No. You get your own one if you want one. I'll buy it for you. <laughs> what do you think, pups? Jack thinks the door is over there. You got. Well, this is like a fleecy, jumpy thing with a little pocket. It goes that all looks, the way through. That looks comfy, cozy as well. Are you going to get that? I do like stripes. Yeah. It it's really a bit cozy. kind of nautical, but yeah. I don't mind that. That's all right. We live by the sea. Yeah, we want things that we can wear in the cottage when we're working and not get cold. Look how fluffy it is. Yeah, I think we're sorted there. Eh? <laughs> nice. A supermarket car park and we're about to go up into the town Sarah's just paying to park and I've got to confess something we're going to McDonald's and I don't normally go to McDonald's it's not really my bag but there is no McDonald's in the sky so suddenly it becomes something you want to do I don't know why it's very different walkies for Jack yeah no sea rivers or lots. Park in the slightly ugly end. Hey, Jack. Are you waiting out 
outside while Dad gets us some quality food for lunch. This doesn't happen very often, but uh, it's a little treat. Yeah, normally we're into foraging and wild foods and wild mushrooms and fishing and all that. Today we're eating McDonald's. It's all about balance. When we say we, Jack, we just mean us, not you. That's exactly what I mean. The lie to you folks, as you know, they only have two legs. This supermarket is well known for its lower priced versions of branded products that all look very similar to the real thing, but with a few tiny differences. They even have their own version of Iron Brew, the most popular fizzy drink in Scotland. They are also famous for having special buys in the middle aisle, which means that you might go in for bread and milk but come out with something completely random that you don't actually need. Okay, so we're pretty much done in Inverness now. So, someone's paying attention. We did all the errands we needed to do, went to get some coffee, and we got some donuts there as well for the, for the trip home. Now we are back where we started, at Mountain Warehouse, because Willie got conned, you see. He bought three things and thought they were all on sale. Two were on sale and one was full price. <gasps> So he got charged too much for what he thought he was buying. So he has, like a true Scot, gone back to take it back. <laughs> if you don't know, Scots are notoriously supposed to be tight with their money. They do like a bargain. Definitely like a bargain. So do Geordies actually. So yeah, he wasn't impressed with that. So he's gone back in. <laughs> and once we've done that, we'll be on the road. The bargain hunter returns. I was just telling them all how you're a tight Scotsman. All oh, right, yeah. And you don't like spending money. It was like three times the price. <laughs> you just like a bargain, don't you? Yeah. As does everyone. Twelve ninety nine for some of them, and thirty quid for the other ones. Nah, I want the twelve ninety nine. Right, should we go back to uh, where do we live again? Oh yeah, Sky. Sky. <laughs>
we're back home and we've got our comfy, cosy clothes on. Mm-hmm. On the sofa. Long day, driving all the way to Inverness from here. Loved it, it was a good day, enjoyed it. And now we're back here, on the sofa, <laughs> comfy, cosy, happy Friday. Turned out nice though in Inverness. We yeah. We got some nice weather, it was a bit windy, but it was a beautiful day and then it turned... Very cold and very wet as we drove home. So. Yes, it's a torrential downpour right now. <laughs> we had to bring all our food shopping in through an absolute rainstorm. We all look a bit bedraggled. But it'll pass like it always does. Mod the sunshine. It's been just over a week since our trip to Inverness and I have popped to the co-op on Sky to top up on a few bits and pieces like fresh vegetables and bread and milk and things like that. I did think it would be interesting to compare and contrast. I have my receipt from the Aldi shop we did in Inverness. Um, because I'm a major nerd and apparently have too much time on my hands, I'm going to try and work out the difference between the two shops. So we're going to factor in the petrol it took us to get to Inverness as well as the actual food shop. Obviously we did need to do it anyway, we went to Inverness to do lots of different errands, but it'll be really interesting to see the difference in prices, so I'm going to work that out for you today. So I'm going to try and find out what this would have cost in the co-op on Sky. <laughs> I'm back from the supermarket and I have done my nerdy calculations. We went to Aldi yes, in Inverness and we did a big food shop and we got loads of stuff for the freezer, loads of long life food and dog tins and things we could stock up on. We spent £213.72 in Aldi Okay. on a big, big shop. I went to the co-op today not to do a big, big shop, but I took down the prices of what that same shop would have cost us in the co-op on Sky. How much do you think? Would have spent in co-op. 2.30 in Aldi. Other supermarkets are available, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would probably be something like close to 300. Okay, drum roll. In the co-op, we would have spent £287.30. Wow, so it's quite a lot more. So than... the difference is £55.58, uh-huh. which is, that's a pretty good saving. It's a fifth. But we did have to pay for petrol to go to Inverness. Yes. which we think was about £25. So we made a saving of £30.58. Well, there's the variety as well. Yeah, there's things in Aldi that we can't get in the co-op. For some reason, you can't get parsnips in the co-op ever. No. That's pretty insane that we can drive like two hours to Inverness. And still save money. So it's only really worth doing if we're needing to go to that town anyway, because yeah. for the fuel consumption, it's not so great for the environment to be doing that. No, quite true. regularly That's but true. if we are going somewhere like Fort William or Inverness or when we go back to Fife Italian. it really does make sense for us to go and do a big food shop and stock up our freezer and our cupboards yeah there we go there we go and Jack's firmly <laughs> yeah Jack is Jack is there uh, zoned out in this conversation I don't blame you so there you go food shopping is it so much more expensive in co-op yes if you want to go somewhere else it costs you slightly less and you get a day out Mm. And I got to go to McDonald's. Yeah, we maybe spent that saving on McDonald's. <laughs> the next thing for us to try is getting a delivery. Yeah, that's going to be fun. The log store's looking good. Happy with that. That was yesterday well spent. It's still there, which is good news. And now today, I've got to clear out the buyer. I'm going to have to go to the council tip and take a lot of stuff that we don't want. Also, the logs at the back of the buyer, the massive ones about this circumference, they need to chopping up and I think the only way to do that now is with a chainsaw down the middle and then with the axe. I don't think the axe will do anything about this deep and about this round. So if I hit that with an axe, nothing's going to happen. I'm going to go in the side with the chainsaw to the centre and then I can cut it off like pieces of a cake all the way around. Well that's the plan anyway. Let's get going. Let's see how it was left last night. We finished so late as it was getting dark we just chucked everything back in here. So this pile of stuff here is stuff that I brought and want to keep. The stuff over here, a lot of that has got to be scrapped. Apart from the bikes, of course, like those frames and all sorts of stuff that we don't want anyway. And then down here, these are the logs that I'm going to chop up today. They are massive, as you can see. I'm going to get the chainsaw out first, obviously. Let's get started. All of these have got to be split. You can imagine how much room they are taking up. Oh, and there is a sea eagle. Just as you do. Anyway, back to what I was saying. So that's the logs I'm going to chop up. Right on the top. And 
hopefully these boards and these logs in between will stop them from moving too much. We'll see. I hadn't touched the chainsaw for over a week. I'd been sitting in the garage in about minus four conditions, so it was very cold. As you can see, it's taken me a while to get it started, but I'll cut this bit out because it's quite boring. I did get it started eventually. Well, there we go. I cut the slices that I wanted. As you can see now, I can just take bits off with the axe. Happy days. There we go. All chopped up. Lots and lots and lots and lots of firewood for nothing. These ones are too gnarly to cut because they're where the bigger branches came out. So you can't split them. So I'm going to put them in the fire pit in the summer. More free wood. I don't know where I'm going to put it yet, but I'll put it somewhere. So now there is the small matter of moving that enormous pile of logs into this store, which is uh, going to take a while because there's a lot of them. <laughs> And there we have it. All the logs at the front that we're going to burn in the fire and right up the back there are those ones that we're going to burn in the fire pit in the summer. So they don't need to be at the front, they can just be at the back until we use them. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. Nice wee build. Saved all that room in the buyer as well. Not to mention the money on logs. Hi folks! Look who's here! Hello! Ian's back. No Bex this time though. She's in Vegas. We're going to go over there and over there is an old abandoned settlement. We're going to go and check it out now, the three of us. Three of us? Five of us. Three of us? We're going to go and check it out now, all five of us. Can't forget the main characters. <laughs> Hi De Niro! Hiya pal. Jack looks raring to go. De Niro looks indifferent. Let's go adventuring! Horses. The famous wild horses of the Glen.
Jack, do you have to drink the muddy water? There's rivers everywhere. He doesn't drink them though, he only drinks muddy water. Why? Well, just because he's Jack Spaniels. And that's what he does. There they are. Scotland on a shoestring with the Coolins in the background. And as promised, up there is an eagle for Ian to see. We did promise him an eagle. Uh, we see them all the time up here, as you'll know if you've been watching this series. But uh, you never get bored of that. That is gorgeous. And it's coming this way. Look out beside the moon. Check this out. We found the settlement. The abandoned village we are searching for is likely another of the settlements affected by the Highland Clearances in the 18th and 19th centuries, a sad and often brutal part of Scottish history. Many families in the Highlands and Islands of Scotland were forced from their homes by the landowners, who realised that using this land for grazing livestock was more profitable than renting to individuals who worked the land. Their homes were destroyed after they left to prevent anyone returning and reoccupying them. Many of the displaced residents were pushed towards the crowded mainland towns and cities to find work, while others were forced to emigrate to British colonies in America, Canada and Australia. The clearances almost wiped out the unique culture of the Scottish Highlands, but the families who left fought hard to retain it and took many elements of it with them to their new homes. This settlement can be seen on maps as a township in 1824, with around 28 buildings and several animal enclosures. About a dozen families were forced to leave their homes here during the clearances, and by 1875, only three buildings were still occupied. Before long, the entire settlement was deserted, leaving these homes to fall into disrepair and eventually be reclaimed by the landscape. Nero is not keen on water. Jack, come on. Biscuits. Oh. oh. This is so embarrassing for both of us. <laughs> that, is, that is proper dedication though. That's a good dog dad right oh there. Oh Well done. Would you like a biscuit to be so incredibly brave? Well done, De Niro. Well done. Oh. It takes a big dog to... Uh, Except a lift over a river. <laughs> <laughs> ah, nice. Jack's like, excuse me? <laughs> Here he goes though, intrepid. Oh my gosh. Anything for Scotland or a shoestring. If you haven't already, please do check out Ian and his wife Bexy's YouTube channel, Scotland on a Shoestring. They highlight the best of Scotland, but done so on a budget. And if that's not a noble quest, I don't know what is. A link to Scotland on a Shoestring is in this video's description. Head over there after you watch this video, of course, and give them a sub. Thank you. <laughs> My shoes straight are a bit wet. <laughs> a wee bit. <laughs> Look at this, stunning. De Niro agrees, and so does Jack. Wow. Look the tree growing in it. With its large windows and entrance facing west, we think this building would have been a church or chapel, although we can't find any confirmation of this in the records online. This area was once an important and populous settlement, one of the largest on the Isle of Skye, so it makes sense that there would have been a religious building here.
This was a run-rig township, meaning the land for cultivation was divided into strips and shared out between the inhabitants. The strips, or rigs, were periodically reassigned, so no one family had continuous use of the best land. Besides the stunning views, you can see why there was a settlement here. The surrounding hills shelter this glen from the worst of the Scottish weather, and the burns running through it provide ample fresh water for drinking and farming. Now all that is left of the lives spent in this glen are the crumbling stone walls and the grazing sheep, a constant reminder of the sad events that took place in this and so many settlements in Scotland. Beautiful building behind me there. We think it's a church, but we're not sure. I also heard there's two stone columns here that are from the 8th century, so Viking era or earlier. So we're desperate to try and find them. I think they're down there somewhere. So we're going to go and have a wander and see if we can find them as well. Okay, we went off to try and find the stone columns from the 8th century and we did not find them, but we did find a massive bog instead. So we gave up and now we're on our way back. So we're going to the Skylife Cottage to get in our new hammock with Ian and a couple of beers, I think. What do you reckon? I think that sounds like a great plan. Yeah, <laughs> let's do that. <laughs> Face off. I'm not scared of you. I just can't get over the colour of the water. So as promised, we're back at the house and we've got a beer and we're in the hammock and we're probably going to stay here until the sun goes down, which isn't long from now. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Here he is. Ian's coming out to the fire pit. Not that you can actually see him. It's <laughs> dark. I'm out in the byre. We had a friend Richard round yesterday and he brought around some power tools which are on the floor behind me here. Talking about the byre floor, he got his laser line out and what's become apparent is that the floor is very uneven. What we're intending to do was even it out, but we can't do that because the walls of the byre have been built onto the ground, just the earth. 
So when we got the pick out and we dug down, we realised that the wall just goes down about an inch below the concrete. So it's no good, we can't dig that. We would have to go down below the level of the wall, which would mean we'd be into the earth, which would mean it'd be unstable. This is the concrete floor that we smashed through. That's the bottom of the wall there. So we can't even out the floor. We've just got to build on top of it. That's the bottom of the wall and that's earth under there. So we're going to have to construct a wooden floor. So we know what we're doing now at least. It doesn't make it easier, but at least we know what we're doing. The buyer is absolutely full of stuff still because we haven't got the shed. The materials for the shed are being delivered tomorrow, which means that I've got to get everything the buyer moved again <laughs> to accommodate all the materials that are coming in. Otherwise it'll be outdoors and open to the elements, which is no good. But I'm looking around me now and I'll probably show you on screen, but there's stuff absolutely everywhere, particularly towards the front. So I'm gonna to have to move everything in the buyer again, probably right to the back corner there, out the way, so we can get on with the job of building the shed, then empty all the stuff that's in the buyer into the shed once it's built. First thing I've got to do though, is roll my sleeves up and get this stuff moved. It seems that Captain Snuffles here has come to help, and by help, I mean probably hinder. Oh yeah, we took that stone out as well there, out of the floor to see what was underneath it, and again it's just earth, so that's going back in. There's no need to take those stones out, because all that's going to happen is we're going to build a wooden floor on top of it anyway. I bought four bags of this mortar, and the idea is that I want to repoint some of the walls, but I can't do it because you can't use it in anything below plus five degrees, which right now it isn't. It's either minus or it's just above, so unfortunately, that's going to have to wait for a few weeks. So this side of the buyer is now all the stuff that's going to be stored in the shed, although I have a feeling we're going to get rid of some more, especially if Sarah's got anything to do with it. This side of the buyer is where all the materials will be stored, and this corner here, or this area here, and this area here, if need be, will be the workstation so we can make our cuts of wood and everything if it's pouring with rain. We now have an area for storage, an area for work, and an area for all the stuff that's eventually going to end up in the shed, which is all I intended to do. Happy days! As always folks, thank you so much for watching our video and thank you if you have been liking, commenting and subscribing. If you haven't already, please do hit subscribe. It's free, it helps us out as a channel and we really appreciate it. Yes we do! If you want to support this channel further, you can do so over on Ko-fi by buying us a coffee. Or if you want to support us more long term, you can head to our Patreon page and join us there for loads of bonus content. We hope you've enjoyed this video. As you can see, we have had some fairly changeable weather conditions here on Sky. <laughs> we've had sun, we've had hail, we've had snow, wind, everything in between. And our cosy, fluffy jumpers that we got in Inverness definitely have paid off. Thanks so much for watching and see, see you, you next, next week! week. <laughs> We're leaving our suburban life Moving over the sea to sky Are we chasing a dream? I guess in time we will see When we're living the sky life Living the sky life Just some behind the scenes footage for you guys This is what I have to stand on so I'm not looking like a tiny person next to me. <laughs> nice bagpipes in the background as well. Oh, is that your wrist? It was my elbow. <laughs> <laughs> we found the settlement. And we just found Sarah's GoPro. <laughs> De Niro, isn't that Jack's bed? No, seems reasonable. It's my bed. I'm just gonna have a lie down here. I am not in this bed. It's not me. You look at someone else. I'm a good boy. If you click on the left icon, you can subscribe to Living the Sky Life. If you click on the right icon, it'll take you back to our very first episode.